Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our audio podcast of Coffee with Sister Vasa, or simply welcome to this audio podcast if it's your first time listening to it. We're putting this one up, everybody, also on YouTube so that people can sample it. All right. If you've been missing out on our audio podcasts uh, of Coffee with Sister Vasa, available on Patreon.com, then check it out. All right. If you go to Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com, and search for Sister Vasa, V A S S A over there, you will find our audio podcast. This is already the hundred and forty fourth one, everybody. And these podcasts are made by me, Sister Vasa, and my sound producer and in-house artist, Rob. He's our comic strip illustrator. Rob, I haven't let you say say hello to the zillions. Hello, zillions. So we're sitting here in Vienna, Austria. I'm drinking coffee, and Rob scandalously is drinking simply water because he doesn't drink coffee. I know it's a scandal, but it's the way it is, all right? All right, what are we talking about today, my beloved listeners? We're talking about discerning our vocation. Vocation, that uh, strange word, right? That elusive concept. So we're covering the basics this summer, as I've told you many times. And this is one of the basics, something I often talk about, this concept of vocation. So what does that mean? Vocation comes, of course, from the Latin verb vocare, to call. So, a vocation is my calling. That is to say, what I am called not only to do, but to be in life. Now, who is it that calls me? From whom does vocation or calling come? From God. All right? A person of faith understands that a calling comes from God. Now, if you're listening to this and you do not believe in God, you will also hear from modern-day psychology. Uh, For example, uh, Carl Jung writes about vocation, that it is the most liberating thing uh, for a person and the building of their personality. And he said that it is important to recognize that vocation comes from outside of us. I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm going to talk about vocation in uh, the sense and in the revealed sense of a faithful Christian. All right. We are all called in a communal and general sense as church. All right. The word ecclesia the word for church, comes from the Greek verb ekaleo, which means to call out. We are all, as church, as ecclesia, called out. Called to what? You're asking? Rob, are you asking that? (laughs) Rob has this puzzled look on his face. He's like, what do you mean, sister? Tell us the suspense is killing us. So here it goes. We are called to come to Christ and follow him on the cross-carrying journey, as he says, come to me in Matthew chapter 11, verses, which ones, Rob? 28 to 30. Yes. (laughs) It was on the tip of his tongue. Yeah. So Rob was right about to say it. Matthew 11, uh, verses 28 to 30. Come to me, says our our Lord Jesus Christ, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right, so that's how, first and foremost, we're all called to come to Christ and to follow him on this easy, yes, easy and uh, light path of the cross. All right. Now, in a personal sense, in a more individual sense, the how of this calling or vocation is specific to us, to ourselves. All right. The how 
we follow, how we come to Christ and follow him, each of us personally. Is everybody still listening? Probably not everybody, but those of you who are still listening, like poor Rob here, who has no choice because, you know, Rob works for me. (laughs) Um, How we personally come to Christ and follow him is what we usually mean by our own specific vocation, all right? And this uh, depends on my specific set of experiences, uh, gifts, and weaknesses as well, all right? The whole set of um, what I am, uh, all of this builds and forms uh, what my vocation is. Now, let me note, everybody, I know that this isn't a simple question, all right? So I'm trying to develop and point out various aspects of this whole business of discerning vocation. We're going to get to the interesting parts, so hang in there, all right? If you're not hanging in there, you could always turn this off and come back later, you know. All right, so let me note that vocation is not only and not even primarily the big questions, all right, like our choice of marital uh, status or lack thereof, our choice of career, profession, whether we become priests, ladies, don't worry about that, (laughs) or monastics, or rock stars, or or maybe both, right, Rob? Does that ever happen? Both both things? I don't think that both of those are possible together. I think you're a rock star. You think I'm a rock star? That, That was the right answer, Rob. See? I pay him well. (laughs) So anyway, everybody, listen, Rob, nobody's going to subscribe now. (laughs) You know, they're going to be like, this is some kind of a Beavis and Butthead, uh, you know, thing that we're doing here. Everybody bear with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bear with me. I know I'm being silly. So although, of course, our vocation is also these big questions, everybody, what, what we, you know, decide to do in a big way and whether we get married, and so on, I would like to point out something that I find more important, and that is uh, that is the daily discernment, okay, in the smaller questions of what I am to do today, all right? Our calling does change in certain ways on a daily basis of what we're supposed to be doing concretely, in the today, all right? And, of course, even the big questions of vocation can change. That's very rare, but, you know, people get divorced, for example. That can bring a major change in the way we are called to serve and to be. Um, But it is in the small questions, I think, that we maintain a healthy sense of our vocation. Now, what am I to do today? How am I to serve others and myself? How am I to be of service? Is uh, the essential question on our cross-carrying journey as I take the next right step on my journey, right? On the cross-carrying journey. Now, We will get to more practical, uh, you know, uh, considerations here of how to discern this. First of all, let's consider what the signals are of what my specific vocation calling is. All right? Um, How can I, what can help me to discern? Of course, I ask God for wisdom in prayer uh, and for God's grace. I open up to God's grace that I may be capable of discernment. But we're also going to talk about other ways uh, of helping us to discern this question. So the first signal of what my specific vocation is, both in the big things and the little things, is the most obvious one. Here's the most obvious signal. It's what I'm good at. Does that sound too simple to everybody? Well, it's obvious, but usually, um, you know, it's what I'm good at. Number two, what I'm well positioned to do. All right? This is not always the case. I'm not always well positioned to follow my vocation. All right? 
But it's one of those, it is uh, often the case that I am well positioned, say, because I have a lot of money. That's not my case, but it might be yours. You know, maybe I have a beautiful singing voice, um, like Rob here. <laughs> I've never heard him sing, but they say that he has a good voice. Uh, <laughs> maybe he'll sing for us one of these days, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. All right. That's something to look forward to, everybody. (laughs) You have to subscribe now. You don't want to miss Rob singing, do you? Um, Here's something wise that I heard somebody say once. Well, somebody said it to me. Uh, What is God's will? God's will is what you can do. (laughs) Sounds very simple, but a lot of brilliant things, ingenious uh, things also, are very simple. If you're bending over backwards to do something, and perhaps even destroying some of your close relationships in the process with what you're doing, perhaps, you know, you should ask yourself if you're not actually following what you're supposed to be doing according to your vocation, all right? If you're driving down the road and you notice that all the other cars are driving in the same lane but in the opposite direction, you know, you have oncoming traffic in your lane, well, maybe that's a signal that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Not necessarily, right? There are those rare cases. This is all a question of discernment, my, discernment, my friends. I can't give you a magic formula that decides once and for all uh, what you're supposed to be doing, right? Uh, I am uh, discussing some of the things that help us to discern. Now, sometimes, here's what makes it even more tricky, right? Uh, something I just touched upon. Sometimes, What we are doing at the present time is the very thing that's blocking us from hearing God's call to us, okay, in our true vocation. Now, these things are tricky, but, you know, it it ain't for sissies, okay, the cross-carrying journey. But it is, God does call us to hear and does give us responsibility. What's responsibility? Ability to respond, all right? We as grown-ups, right, we as adults are called to, you know, respond to our call. Uh, That was not a very well-formed sentence, Rob. Sorry about that. Um, Another signal could be, but you have to be careful about this as well, what we feel drawn to do. Again, I'm saying be careful. You might be drawn, you know, today to go day drinking in your local pub. And that might not be uh, a, a you know, reliable kind of signal. So, everybody, in both the small and the big questions of vocation, all right, that we are called to discern, that we don't have a magic formula to discern, we will get to some practical tips as to what can help us discern. Um, In both the small and big questions, we do have obstacles and baggage, if you will, that gets in the way of discerning the next right thing, okay? What are these obstacles? Let's contemplate this, okay? Because talking about this and contemplating it is helpful for discernment, all right? And we can seek counsel and share with one another on this cross-carrying journey that we receive help in this kind of um, thinking according to um, the light of God's word. Now listen, the obstacles to discerning vocation can be, number one, merely human, merely human opinion, pressures, and ambitions. Like, here's the big one, people-pleasing. Does everybody know this expression, people-pleasing? It is when we are compelled to do things or feel compelled to do things, say things, buy things, for example, unwise spending habits, or to be things just so that other people are always pleased with us, consider us a nice or pious person or a better person than other people, While the activity or activities we're pursuing to be pleasing to others may be somehow destructive to us on the inside, 
And we might even be resentful that we invited, say, our whole parish to over to our house once again for a big party that we can't afford, but we wanted to be nice. I don't know if that sounds familiar to anybody, okay? But examples of this kind of people-pleasing that leads us into doing what we're not supposed to be doing, what is not God's call, but a call of rather other voices, not that of God, all right? Taking on more responsibilities than we can handle, all right? Say even at the church parish. This is a tricky thing, everybody. I'm not discouraging us to do, you know, church work. What I'm saying, however, is that we are called to quite sophisticated discernment, okay? Because in our day and age, we are sophisticated Orthodox Christians. The Holy Spirit has been working from generation to generation, okay, throughout church history. And we've come a long way, despite what some people would, you know, preach uh, as if everything, you know, we're all going to hell in a handbasket because we're just going downhill as church, you know, ever since the golden age of the fathers. That's not true. The Holy Spirit has not worked in vain. We are getting more sophisticated, and we are capable of handling this kind of discernment, okay? So we have to discern not just on, you know, once and for all our vocation, but on a daily basis, we can discern and need to discern what we are called to do in the today. Okay, here's another obstacle, everybody, to discerning vocation, and we need to identify it and name it so that when it rears its ugly head, we can have the tools to respond to it and, uh, you know, to squash this bad thing. It is the following, self-centered fear. Did everybody hear that? Self-centered fear is another obstacle to following our true vocation in the today. And it is very much connected to what I was just talking about, people-pleasing. All right? Whether you want to please your parents, please your kids, or please, I don't know who, maybe society at large, right? It is self-centered fear that is the primary motivator, the drive, all right, of that disease to please. Did you like that, Rob? Yeah, I didn't I didn't make it up. Mm-hmm. I, you know, this is the type of thing people say um, in certain cultures <laughs> and 12-step programs. The disease to please. Let's let's note that one and try to identify it if we've been afflicted by it. This can totally, you know, poison your whole life. People pleasing can be a way of life if it, you know, gets into the extreme Um, You know, in its extreme forms, it can completely, um, you know, be a killer inside. And we might be carrying around silent, poisonous resentments because of it, because we just find ourselves caught up in this web of pleasing everybody, all right, Uh, to the detriment of our spiritual, sometimes even physical health, all right? So let's identify this uh, silent uh, disease in our midst. Now, we may fear disappointing people close to us. Usually it's those people close to us, you know. This is why uh, our Lord reminds us that our uh, it is the members of our household that are our enemies, but they are our enemies uh, when we fall into the disease to please, okay? We might fear also, everybody, not living up to some image we carry around in our heads. Sometimes that comes from popular culture of how we're supposed to look, for example. So we buy clothing and shoes and cars that we can't afford, right? This is how we slip into not doing what we're called to do with our gifts, our money, our talents, and so on. This is, everybody, you're thinking, it's not a question of vocation, sister. Yes, it is. All of this is, it's what we're called, how we're called, all right, in the today to come to Christ and follow him, all right? And all these things are important, all right? We're also pressured by society to have an image of how we're supposed to be, quote unquote, happy, okay? That's a big one, which pressures some of us, for example, if we're single or divorced, right? We... We start feeling this 
fear of being alone. Even if solitude, my friends out there, are you still listening? Am I rambling? I'm rambling, Rob. Listen, everybody. Even if solitude is perhaps what we are given as a gift, okay? Some of us are given solitude as a gift. Not everybody, but, you know, it's how you look at things and how you're able to be grateful for what God God sends you in the today that really changes everything. An attitude of gratitude, my friends, changes the way we see, the way we are able to act and follow our vocation. Because if you're always seeing the glass as half empty, you might not be seeing how you can serve, be of service today, and be liberated to follow your vocation. Maybe the very thing that you're fearing, like being alone, is your key to being the you that God wants you to be, according to his calling to you specifically, all right? But if we're living what's called a comparative life, right, pressured perhaps by looking on other people's Facebook pages, right, and seeing our ex being living a life of perfect fulfillment without us (laughs) and stuff like that, right, or seeing our people that we went to school with uh, making more money, being, I don't know, you know, going on vacations that are fancy, that we can't afford, whatever, you know. If you live a comparative life rather than following your vocation, God's purpose for you, discerning it on a daily basis in gratitude and attentiveness. Is that a word, Rob? Attentiveness? Yeah. All right, good. I'm glad it's a word. Um, Listen, everybody, you know, we might be missing the mark. What is... What is sin, amartia in Greek? It means literally, as I've told you many times and probably everybody knows, sorry to insult your intelligence out there, sin, amartia, means to miss the mark. And sin, with a capital S, right, is missing the whole point of your life, okay? And real sin, not the kind of, you know, list of sins that we, you know, ate chocolate, uh, whatever, overdid it with, I don't know what, you know, um, sin, the really, you know, big deal sin is missing what your purpose is, okay? Um, Everything turns into sin, you know, even the seemingly innocent things if we're not following our vocation. All right. Now that's a pleasant thought, Rob, right? Um, So if we're always seeing the grass as being greener in someone else's yard, or we think that because we don't have a yard and the white picket fence and a family, uh, you know, and a dog <laughs> all smiling all the time like in a television commercial, all right, we might be just missing the whole point, right? We're being confused and pressured by voices that are not God's. All right, so let's look at a scripture passage again, everybody, that tells us some more about obstacles to responding to our vocation. Does everybody remember the parable of the great banquet given by that man who invites people to his banquet and then people start refusing? That's in chapter 14 of the gospel according to Luke, okay? Uh, For example, now let's look. Luke chapter 14, verses 15 to 24, everybody. Listen, this is what our Lord tells us about this banquet. I want you to note, everybody, as I read this, some of the obstacles to responding to our Lord's call to us. Listen, when one of those who sat at the table, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to start a little bit later. All right, I'm going to start with verse 16. Everybody bear with me, all right? I started a little early. All right, I'm beginning with verse 16, Luke chapter 14. A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for all is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. I pray you have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. I pray you have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported this to his master. 
Then the householder, in anger, said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in the poor and maimed and blind and lame. All right, everybody, <clears throat> I'm stopping the quote there. Did everybody hear that, that there were various excuses to come to the banquet, which is the call of our Lord to come to him and his kingdom? All right, the kingdom of heaven that is already near, that we already experience in the here and now on the cross-carrying journey in Christ. All right? Now, there's one guy has bought a field, the other has bought oxen. Do you notice that there are these purchases that people have made that make them uh, busy? They have to tend to their property. Then there is also a relationship, a marriage that a man has entered into. He says, I have married a wife. So yes, there are our loved ones that could become obstacles if we engage relationships and activities, everybody, without God in the picture, okay? If we are completely uh, in self-will and engaged in, like I said, self-reliant, okay, self-reliant and graceless activity and relationships. So, it is very, I understand this sounds very difficult, right? And sort of refined and sophisticated. However, God does call us on a daily basis. We can't just do it once and for all, right? Uh, activities, relationships uh, arise every day in small and big ways, right? Not always in the big ways, but in small ways. You know, you're going down the street and there's a beggar. What are you called to do? You know? Anyway, it's not always clear-cut. All right. Here are some practical suggestions. These are just suggestions, right, that I'm sharing with you people as usual. Number one about discerning vocation. I say to myself, if I'm really, you know, in sort of a rut or I see, you know, this fork in the road, everybody... I put pen to paper, put pen to paper and write down what is going on, okay, whenever I have questions about what I should be doing according to my vocation today, all right? So I write down the specific activity or calling that I am contemplating, okay? This could be one of those big things, right? If you're a young person and you're deciding something big, you know, should I or shouldn't I? <clears throat> now, if it's an activity or calling I'm contemplating, right, uh, whether it's one I'm already engaged in and wondering whether I should not be doing it, right, say I'm a, I don't know, uh, I, I can't really think of a good example right now, but <clears throat> you might be doing something, finding that, you know, it's unwise somehow. It might be damaging to your marriage, for example, you're doing, uh, I don't know, conducting a choir in your uh, school or in your parish. <clears throat> now, you're considering, you're writing down this activity, you're writing down also its pluses and minuses, okay? And you're asking yourself, it really helps to write it down, my friends, is there a merely human fear inspiring you to do this? Is it people-pleasing? Are there signals that it's the right thing, right? It's not always, it doesn't, it, you have to have discernment, right? This is what we ask God for in prayer. Um, it's not always clear-cut, all right? Uh, the fact that somebody might disapprove is not necessarily <clears throat> a signal that you shouldn't be doing it, okay? So I'm not giving you a magic formula here. I'm calling us to discern it. Okay, number three <clears throat> is pray. Of course, pray. We ask God in prayer for what? Well, prayer, everybody, isn't uh, magic, okay? What prayer is, as our Lord teaches us to pray, is us opening up to God's grace, okay? I've mentioned this in a previous podcast, in several ones, actually. Prayer is not a magic formula that manipulates God to do what we want. Prayer, my friends, is 
the key to opening up our hearts that we tend to block, okay, from God. He's not blocking himself from us, nor does he change his attitude towards us because of our prayers. He doesn't. He already wants to give us everything. He already knows what we need, right? If you check Matthew 6, check out how we're taught to pray, okay? It's not magic. <clears throat> it is a way for us to open up. That's why we say, thy will be done, thy kingdom come. These things that sound very passive, but they are opening me up so that God can give me what he already wants to, all right? So that I, you know, take down those barriers I've put up. Now, the final thing I want to say as a practical suggestion, I know these things are sort of obvious, putting pen to paper, okay? If you haven't tried it, I urge you simply to try it. It really helps to see things written out. You'd be surprised, okay? <clears throat> I know many of you don't write anything anymore. You just type, but try writing. Okay, now, the final thing is seek counsel. I already mentioned it, but not really systematically. We seek counsel, okay, from somebody close to us, like a spouse, our spouse, right? Our priest, obviously, okay? If you're a church person, um, you know, you seek counsel from your spiritual father. Professional counsel can also be helpful, everybody, uh, of a psychotherapist, okay? But <clears throat> the thing that we sometimes do with psychotherapy, if we're in need of it, right? If we're all, <clears throat> you know, because not, you know, not being straight about what you're supposed to be doing in life can be very crippling psychologically as well as spiritually, okay? And sometimes we need professional help to discern what we are called to do, okay? But sometimes we turn psychotherapy into just a session of, you know, rambling on because nobody else seems to listen to us. And if you lose your goal-oriented, you know, focus in psychotherapy, then you might be wasting a lot of money. So if you can get your goals straight and uh, ask for professional help in discerning what you're supposed to be doing, well, this can actually be very helpful. Okay, so we need to do a separate podcast on that, Rob, <clears throat> because people are going to be like, Sister, did you say we should seek psychotherapy? It's a separate topic, everybody. You know what, Rob? We have only a little bit of time. Am I ov way over time? We I am. No, not way over time. It was mm -hmm. four minutes. Four minutes? Yes. Okay, we do have a, a viewer mail. <laughs> we call it inappropriately, everybody, on this audio podcast. We call this segment that we have at the end viewer mail. And we just think that it sounds better than listener mail. That's why we call it that. All right. Anyway, complain to Rob if you don't like it, because he's responsible for anything you don't like on this podcast. All right, Rob, you take over All with right. the viewer mail. All right. This week's viewer mail uh, came to us from a woman in Texas. She wrote to our email address, uh, coffeewithsistervasa at gmail.com. And she writes, <clears throat> hello, Sister Vasa. Today, I was listening to your Patreon episode 142, Liturgical Vestments podcast, and thought I just had to email you again. Really enjoyed learning more about religious vestments because my background is in textiles and apparel. I mentioned in a previous email that I am a doctoral student. Doctoral. A, doc a doctoral student. <laughs> <laughs> a doctoral student. <laughs> well, that's how we say it here in Austria, everybody. So, you know, don't be picky. It's, it's the way, you know, like we say instead of milestone. Uh -huh. How do we say it, Rob? <laughs> here in Austria. I believe that would be a kilometer stone. Exactly. We have kilometer stones <laughs> and not milestones. Like we had our 140th <laughs> podcast. We called that not a milestone, a kilometer stone. All right. Let's get serious, sister. Okay, Rob, uh, you go on. She continues. <coughs> do you do spiritual direction or academic coaching online or via email? Do you accept donations? And is there a suggested fee if you do this? Okay, this is why we're reading this nice email. Thank you to the woman in Texas, by the way. Yeah. I'm fascinated, actually, that you're into, uh, you know, textiles and stuff. Uh, I find that interesting. I myself am obviously, Rob, a fashion icon. Yeah, of course. So that's probably why you follow my show, my friend. Anyway, she's asking this lovely lady, um, do I do spiritual direction via a... a 
you know, email or online or academic coaching, well, you know, you're not the first one, my friend out there from Texas, to ask this. So you gave us a good idea. We are offering now, is everybody listening? We are offering, if you go to our website, www.coffeewithsistervasa.com, we're, call, we're calling it Video Chat with Sister Vasa. And yes, we're offering for a certain price, um, to support our ministry, because we are always looking for ways to stay afloat, my friends. We do have a big online ministry now, and I have several assistants, right? Um, we think that this is a good idea. We're offering uh, one-hour sessions, okay, to just chat with me if you like, all right? You can write to our website. You'll see all the contact information, like I said, www.coffeewithsistervasa.com. And if you want to just pick my brain, say, on an academic topic, right? You know that I am a, I do have a doctorate in uh, Orthodox theology um, with a focus on liturgiology, the history of our liturgy, okay? Or you just want to talk about a private topic, okay? A spiritual concern of yours. Uh, you know my daily reflections, my friends, if you follow them. I am, uh, you know, just a, a simple uh, Orthodox woman living in a city. And, uh, you know, I have a down-to-earth kind of approach to our faith. I think that if you know my work, that's true. And if you just want to talk to somebody, you know, uh, about anything really, then we're offering this. So check it out if you're interested, all right? Um, it is for a fee to support our ministry, like I said. And uh, we'll see if people are interested. A few people have asked me about it, so I'm off offering it. See if, if people get into it. It's a video chat, all right? And it won't be recorded un unless, you know, you want it to be recorded. But it's a private thing. You could also do it with a group or even a classroom of people. Um, but that would cost more. We decided to, to set it up this way, okay? So I can also chat with groups. Um, but the way we set it up with my crew here is that that would cost more. All right. So, uh, one hour session, just check it out. It's called video chat with sister Vasa. All right, Rob, why don't you read the end of this email that yeah. we were trying to, uh, cover in viewer mail? Uh, she finishes. <clears throat> I assume you are very busy. So I feel I must respect your time and do not want to impose. I have been listening to you for a few years now and appreciate learning from you, so I thought I would ask if there were any opportunities to speak with you about more personal matters. Kindest regards. And she signs her name. All right, so thank you again for that email. We're going to finish on that note, everybody. Please check out our website and know, if you've not been keeping up with our website, that we do have uh, for free, you know that you can follow daily reflections, okay? on scripture simply by typing in your email address at our beautiful website, okay? www.coffeewithsistervasa.com. Check it out there. Type in your email. We have well over 2,000 people subscribed to that email, and you can get a bit of scripture in your life every day, okay? The other thing is these audio podcasts you can get for five bucks a month. It's not a lot, okay? And you get two a week. Plus, we offer an online course on divine liturgy that's ongoing, has already over 20 videos, and that is available also on patreon.com, okay? But that is for bonus sus subscribers. Also, very cheap, a little bit more expensive, but very cheap, 10 bucks a month, only $10 a month, okay? This is a lot of material and a lot of content, so join us this summer, all right? And help us stay afloat, okay? We're going to say goodbye to you now. Check it all out either on patreon.com by going p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com and there you search for Sister Vasa. All right? Does everybody get that? <laughs> I'm sorry to uh, be so repetitive, right, Rob? This is called avoiding closure. So why don't you say goodbye to the zillions, Rob? Rob is the illustrator of our comic strip, everybody. So check out our very funny very exciting comic strip as well mm -hmm. at that same website. <laughs> Rob is our world-famous artist <laughs> and sound producer. <laughs> All right, Rob. And he's responsible for anything you don't like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. about this show. All right, Rob. You say goodbye to the Sillians. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you very much. 
And I'm saying goodbye. I'm Sister Vasa, and this has been Coffee with Sister Vasa, a habit you do support.